Here's three questions for you to think about. Do you have control of your finances? Are you up to debt in your eyeballs like I was after dental school? Do you have a financial plan that's gonna allow you to retire on your own terms? These are some of the things that we're gonna get into today. So you'll be able to lower stress, avoid burnout, and retire with options. Now there's five things that I know how to do fairly well. How to uh, be a decent parent, how to play tennis, how to deer hunt, how to place implants in somebody's mouth, and how to help dentists and other professionals lower stress and avoid burnout by achieving financial independence. Hi, I'm Dr. Jeff Anzalone, a periodontist from Louisiana. More than likely, you're not too concerned about being a better parent or playing tennis, shooting a deer, or getting me to screw an implant in your jaw. But you may be interested in learning how becoming financially free can completely change your life. Now, I want you to imagine that you've gone through four years of dental school, a three-year residency, and you're only two weeks from graduation. You've already racked up $300,000 of student loan debt, you're married with a two-month-old, and you've already bought a home with your spouse with an interest-only loan. Now, during the time that you've been training, you've been speaking to a, a group about joining their practice. You're super excited about getting out, starting to work, paying off those bills, making good money, and then it happens. They call you only two weeks before graduation to let you know the deal's off the table. What would you do? Unfortunately, this is what happened to me once I finished my training at LSU. And the worst part was I didn't have a clue how to start a practice, how to run a business, because I was relying on the group to teach me. But as the great scholar and philosopher Rocky Balboa, from the hit movie Rocky, once told his son, Hey, yo, kid, it's not about how hard you hit. It's about how hard you can get hit and keep moving forward. So I quickly learned that life ain't fair, and I had to do something to drag myself up out of the situation. Luckily, I connected with another dental specialist in my area who took me under his wing. He allowed me to uh, rent space from him, share, share his staff. He allowed me to use his equipment, but more importantly, he allowed me to, he helped me network with other dentists in the area to start my practice. Have you ever had a mentor help you like that before? If so, then, then you know what I'm talking about. Now, something else that I had to do once I was building my practice, just to try to make ends meet, was something that I did back in high school and college, and that was cut grass. So as a periodontist, there I am mowing yards just to make ends meet, but you know what, you gotta do what you gotta do, right? So um, something else about dental school is when you're in the thick of things, you're not too worried about your loan situation because you know in the back of your mind, you're going to get out making a pretty decent income, right? This was my mindset too, until the deal came up, went off the table. And it caused me to go from an abundance to a scarcity mindset. And this fear of things being taken away from me took over, and it took me years to get rid of. So I want you to imagine that you've gone through all of this school, you've racked up all of this debt, yet this same thing happens to you. What would you do now moving forward? Well, what I'd like to do is share with you the steps my wife and I took that I think could help anybody in here, no matter what stage you are in your career. Now, once I... Um, once this happened to me, I started studying about money, about debt, about finances from some of the popular financial gurus like Dave Ramsey, who um, has a popular radio show about debt. Dave's best known for his seven baby steps to financial peace that actually I took and I modified to four steps for people like us that we typically start off later, in our, later on in our career, we rack up a lot of debt, but yet we... Um, we typically have an above average income. So my first suggestion to you would be start an emergency fund. And probably more than likely you have money saved up at this point. But what I'm talking about is having enough saved up to where you can cover three to six months of, of living expenses. Now this could be anywhere from $10,000 to $50,000 depending on your lifestyle. But the whole point is this, if your HVAC system goes out or a, a tree falls through the den, you have enough money to cover it without going into further debt. Does that make sense? Okay. 
So once you have your emergency fund in place, it's time to move on to step number two, that is become consumer debt free. And the way that you do that is you list out all of your debts, smallest to largest, and you start with the smallest one. You take all of that extra money and you put it towards that debt. Once it's paid off, you, you go to the next one and you keep going all the way down the line until you've paid off all your debts. This is exactly what we did, and I'll never forget the date, June 22nd, 2011. That was six years, four months, and 22 days to accomplish this step. And if we can do it, you can too. Simply start small, stay focused to your debt free. Now, I want you to imagine that you have zero payments and you don't owe anybody anything. How would you feel? Probably pretty good, right? So once you become consumer debt free, it's time to move on to step number three, and that is start focusing on building multiple streams of passive income. Now, if you're like most people, probably most people in this room, you're relying on only one income source to pay your bills. Question, what if you get sick? What if you get injured? What would you do? Unfortunately, we're not taught any other way, right? But what are we taught to do? Go to school, study hard, make good grades, get a job, invest our money for 40 years with a financial advisor, and hopefully we'll have enough to retire on. But again, we're not taught any, other, any different way. This was the process that I thought I was gonna go through when I got out of dental school. I didn't know any other way either. But I can guarantee you this, if you go through your entire life only having one income source to support your family, you're going to go through your entire career doing nothing more than trading your valuable time for money. But what if there was a different way? What if you go to the mailbox and you open up a check for $3,500? Next month, $3,500. Month after month, these checks roll in, all without you having to lift another finger or scratch on another tooth. Well, my friends, that's the power of what passive income can do for you. And this whole idea, for me, it didn't come from a, a book, a financial advisor, or a mentor. The idea actually came when we were on a snow skiing trip, which I'm gonna tell you much more about Saturday, the final round, when I give you my five minute talk. Which leads us to the fourth and final step. Become a giver and leave a legacy for your family. Now, when you get to this stage in the game, it's an awesome feeling to have because you can operate your practice that's not driven by money. You're able to give patients what they need, whether or not they can afford it. Let me give you an example that I think will help put things in perspective for you. So I want you to imagine that you're in your, my practice with me when Sharon comes in. She's a 91 year old and everything that she says and, and her mannerisms remind you of your grandmother. Now, she, what Sharon needs is, is implants to support her dentures because hers are so loose it makes it next to impossible to eat. But when I look into her mouth, she doesn't have the bone to support the implants. What Sharon really needs is a new set of teeth, which as a periodontist, I don't do that. But my friend down the street does. So what would you do? Well, I called him and I explained the situation. I said, look, I want you to give her whatever you think is best, send me the bill. That's exactly what he did. And I can't tell you how surprised and appreciative Sharon was. Even for a 91 year old, she hugged me so hard, my ribs hurt for the next day because she was so grateful. But guess what? I would not have been able to do that had I not been replacing my active income with passive income. I may have been upset that I missed out on the money on that case, but here I am now, not worried about money, giving patients exactly what they need, and even being able to pay for it. And you can do the same thing too. When you have no debt, multiple streams of income coming in, and you're not trading time for money. So, Focus on the four steps that we went over today because I can guarantee you there's a Sharon somewhere out there in your life needing your help. Make sure that you're in the position to help her too, and I'll see you on Saturday. Thank you.